To the Big Three conference in the Crimea went not only the leaders of the three great Allied powers, but also the hopes and faith of all men who look to a future free from war. A ship carrying members of the British delegation approaches the Crimea. Within sight of Sebastopol Harbour, a Russian pilot takes over on the bridge. The venue for this most momentous conference of the war is Yalta, one of Russia's most popular peacetime holiday resorts, summer and winter. The actual meetings were held in the Levadia Palace, two and a half miles outside Yalta, a former residence of the Tsars. This region was badly damaged in the great battles which liberated the Crimea, but many houses were restored to accommodate the delegates. Welcoming the Allied leaders at the airport is Mr. Molotov, the Soviet Commissar for Foreign Affairs, here seen greeting General Alexander and others. Among the early arrivals are Mr. Eden and Mr. Sustinius, American Secretary of State. Courtesies include a march past by Soviet guardsmen. Mr. Roosevelt and Mr. Churchill, old acquaintances of the Russian leaders, renew the friendship forged at Tehran. The Levadia Palace, however brilliant its functions in Imperial Russia, never housed so memorable a meeting as this. The decisions reached here have to square up to the bedrock aspirations of the people of the United Nations and prove worthy of their cause. The first to arrive is the warrior statesman Joseph Stalin. Mr. Churchill, wearing a shapka, seems to have picked up a bit of local colour. Traditional headgear of the Caucasian mountaineers, it added to the PM's already extensive collection of hats. Here is the start of the most important of all round table conferences. In this room, the future of Germany was hammered out. Says the Crimea Declaration, we are determined to disarm and disband all German armed forces, to break up for all time the German general staff, remove or destroy all German military equipment, eliminate or control all German industry that could be used for military production, bring all war criminals to justice and swift punishment, and exact reparation in kind. These were the precise terms behind every meeting that took place in those eight crowded days in Yalta. The three great leaders and their staffs of military and political advisers faced the inevitable battery of cameras. Through five and a half years of war, we have long awaited this moment of the Churchill-Roosevelt-Stalin meeting, the Grand Alliance. At this point in our history, we know that Germany is to go into a straitjacket of Allied imposed discipline. The blueprint of its future has been drawn, signed and sealed. Let a quotation from the communique issued from Yalta speak for us all. It is our inflexible purpose to destroy German militarism and Nazism and ensure that Germany will never again be able to disturb the peace of the world.